Hey guys, so another video that I wanted to make today was to talk about my regional capital and also the major city that I used to go to all the time. I was stationed or placed in Poradaka, and Poradaka is like, I don't know, like 30, 40 kilometers away from Mamu and a bit more from Labe. So Labe was my regional capital, and by regional capital that means that's where our uh, regional Peace Corps house was. Every month, uh, Peace Corps says you're allowed to go to your regional capital, hang out with the other Peace Corps volunteers. It's usually a nice house, air-conditioned, uh, typically has a nice library, which Peace Corps volunteers appreciate a lot of. Um, a kitchen with uh, propane gas tanks, um, some nice running water too. It's something just to remind you of home. The regional house I always enjoyed because it's it was a one time a month we got to see the other volunteers. Um, we could make food together, watch movies together, uh, speak English, you know, just share some of our our stories with each other. Um, just be with other Americans, you know, you you appreciate that. Lobby is a huge city. Uh, you can find a lot of good food there. Um, just fresh produce, uh, a few things that you won't be able to find in your local market in terms of variety of produce too, some of the things that come from Senegal, some of the things that are imported. Um, it's just a, a different different availability. Um, so that's always nice. There's also perhaps a, a few nicer bars and clubs in La Bay. Say if you want to be social, you want to go to a cafe, uh, that's a little bit more unique than, you know, your, your corner, uh, all in one village cafe, movie theater, charge center. Uh, you can find that in La Bay, perhaps a little bit more frequently. Uh, you can definitely get fresh meat every day in the village. You're unlikely to get fresh meat every day. Uh, it might've been prepared, you know, on a Sunday and here you are eating on a Wednesday or Thursday, hoping for the best. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Labe also had a really n cool garden. Uh, some guy, he had started a garden project, and so he grew strawberries. And uh, you can go there and you can, they're not going to be the best strawberries, at least a few years ago they weren't, but you can still get strawberries from it. Other things that are nice about Labe is just a big place. You know, there's a lot of different opportunities. Uh, different people to meet. Um, it's it's uh, a good spot on the biking trail. Like, say, if you wanted to bike from your village to another village that would probably be north of La Bay or somewhere around La Bay, you can go to La Bay, stop, you know, get uh, re energized. Uh, I, during my service, actually didn't go to La Bay too much because it would take. A long time to get there so I'd leave my house in Port Daka typically around like six o'clock in the morning and then I would um, wait for a taxi from Port Daka to fill up that might take anywhere from an hour an hour and a half uh, depends really if there was you know it wasn't a busy day then it's gonna take a while and I would go from La Bay are from Poradaka to Mamu, and from Mamu I'd have to wait for another taxi to fill up. I typically met up with Shane Hogan. Shane was uh, um, my site buddy, even though he was like 15, 20 kilometers away from me, but he would take a taxi from Gongori and go from Gongori to Mamu too, and because we both had to go south to go north, just the way it was. Together we'd wait for another taxi to fill up and we'd take a taxi from uh, Mamu. We usually bought like a third seat between us uh, just so we'd have more room. And we'd go from Mamu to Labe. And sometimes we could be in Labe by 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. Other times it might be early afternoon. It really depends on how busy the taxi station was. And that was a frustrating part. So while it took, you know, anywhere from three to five hours to go to um, La Bay in the morning on a Friday, a Friday morning or a Saturday morning. 
Um, and even on a Friday night, we can we sometimes did it on a Friday night after school or Friday afternoon after school uh, to go back to our sites was a bit more strenuous. So I it usually took me nine hours to go back to Port Daka. And that's just, it wasn't troublesome getting a taxi from Labe to Mamu because there's always taxis going from Labe to Mamu. Uh, but uh, just because it's a bigger place. Uh, but going from Mamu to to uh, Poor Dhaka, I could wait a couple hours. And that was always frustrating to me. Um, and that also encouraged me to actually, or discouraged me to go to Labe so often. I was fortunate enough that I did some programs with some local kids and and would use the internet cafe in Mamu, that I actually ended up becoming friends with the people who ran the internet cafe. And this friendship actually paved the way for me to just stay in Mamu. And I always had to go to either Mamu or Labe to get bank and to go to the bank. That was the only way I was going to get my money. I couldn't go in my own capital, my own city to get money. I had to always go to Mamu or Labe, so I was forced to actually leave my site every once in a while. But this friendship that I had with my these guys in Mamu was really great, really essential to my Peace Corps service. Really, I really appreciated them a lot. Like they were awesome guys. Um, but I would stay with them uh, every month. I'd go to their their place in Mamu and stay with them. Um, I'd I'd go buy some really nice food at this um, restaurant by gas station in Mamu. And so for like the first time in a month, I would get, you know, maybe a really nice chicken meal with French fries um, or even a steak. You know, something I couldn't really get in poor Dhaka, at least at the same quality or um, just when I wanted it. And also the price would be a little bit cheaper just because, you know, they're selling, they're able to sell a little bit more, higher quantity, you know, less price. Um, and... I I enjoyed it. Other Peace Corps volunteers were kind of sad because I wouldn't go to the regional capital as often. And it's just it's just time. It's just exhausting. I don't want to be in a taxi uh, for anywhere from like 10 to 15 hours over three days. Um, I don't want to be spending that kind of money, you know, the in a taxi. I'd rather spend that money on other things. And so Mamu worked out perfectly for me. And sometimes my friend Shane would stay with me in Mamu. Um, we would just chit chat and you know drink tea for hours and hours. Uh, I thought Mamu had a lot better places to walk around to, you know, so just some of the older buildings, um, different sites to see, the university. It was I always thought Mamu was a little bit cooler temperature wise. Um, yeah. So for me, those were my two major cities. Looking at them at face value, you probably, an American, wouldn't really see too much of a difference. They would know that Lobby was bigger, a little bit more developed, but you can still get the same amount of food in both cities. You can find a nice restaurant to go to. You might run into a few French um, expats or other expats working on projects in the both cities. Uh, there's gas stations in both, and that's the only place you'll be able to get uh, oatmeal. <laughs> I know I ate a lot of oatmeal during my service. Uh, it might be the only place you can get certain like oil too, like olive oil, um, at least a higher quality oil. Uh, you can definitely get butter from the gas stations. It won't last for too long, but you can still have it. But yeah, so my two cities were Mamu and Labe. Other cities that were nearby was Dalaba and Pita. Those were between uh, Mamu and Labe. Dalaba is definitely, if you can get Dalaba, if you're going to go to be a Peace Corps volunteer and you can get Dalaba, you've, you've, you've got it sealed. Dalaba is a really great city. Um, I think it's a lot smaller than Mamu, but it has some cool buildings, some really great biking trails, some really cool waterfalls not too far away. Um, it's a, it's a temperature-wise, probably the coolest spot out of the four major cities. Pita is, again, uh, not too badly developed, and they have huge waterfalls not too far away from PETA as well. Um, but yeah, the, I think all four of them could offer some really great opportunities to do a lot of good work. Um, there's definitely a lot of students, a lot of programs, expats that are running their own small 
programs in each of the four cities. So just different opportunities there. Um, yeah. Okay. Take care.